Hey guys, Bizmoto. Today I'm out riding a bike you guys haven't seen yet. It's a bike I wanted for a while. I ended up selling my Honda Shadow Arrow. Uh, it's because I I wanted this bike. I think this something I wanted for you know, like I said, I wanted for quite a while. And so far, I must say, guys, I'm in love. <laughs> thing is pretty nice I will stop in a couple minutes and let you guys see well hey how you guys all doing it's uh, Father's Day today hope you guys are all out celebrating or have celebrated with your uh, fathers today you know if they're still around or whatever or maybe you're celebrating with your own kids which would be great also all right. We're supposed to have a big, well, I don't know if it's going to be a big storm, but we're supposed to have rain here today at about 5 o'clock, and it's kind of looking like maybe clouds will be coming in. So I don't know how long of a ride this will be. I kind of want to go drive by Lake Michigan today, but we'll see how things look. But anyways, guys, I'll stop here and let you see what I got. Man, this is an exciting week for me. I got to say. All right, guys. What is it? What did I get this time? Well, here it is. It's an actual Honda Grom. 2014. I got it with 900 miles. Right now I got like 1,070 on it since I got it. Just wanted to ride it, make sure everything was going to work okay. But yeah, man, she is nice. Pretty much the way how I got it, it had a luggage rack on the back. Uh, it's actually a well known brand one. So kind of neat I, I took it off but the bracket to hold it on is still on the back uh, so uh, and that also does the rear fender eliminator it looks like so that was a plus it looks really good I love the, how the guy who owned it put the little red stripe on the wheels that was something I wanted to do on my bike but my bike the little spokes go down into like that flat part of the rim so it'd probably be very hard to put on so I just never did it on my bike and uh yeah man this thing's clean i took it to the car wash washed it up really good yesterday waxed it i just use pledge to wax it i mean it it's wax so same thing you know it's good enough and it seems like it keeps down fingerprint smudges too so that's a plus uh <laughs> it's kind of like a piece of furniture right uh but yeah this bike is sweet i love it now i see why there is such a big following for these groms i really do but uh this bike i'm gonna leave it stock i honestly like the way how it is now i don't need to go any faster if i need to go fast i got my zs 190 uh the only thing i might change is i might change the handlebars to uh pro tapers and uh and uh that's it you know i i i got the, some uh pillow top grips for it to go on it to the pro taper pillow top grips and yeah let's go back for a ride guys this thing is i love this bike very clean and i also like how it has the electronic fuel injection that makes it start up right away And this bike is so easy to shift too, you know, I mean, uh, my, uh, my, uh, what do you call that, my Grom clone I have is, a, yeah, the shifting is a little bit more picky on it, so I always miss shifts or whatever, you know, but the, the Grom clone is at least a five speed, so it, it makes it a little more, a little more fun in that respect, because you got an extra gear and motor doesn't wind out as fast but yeah guys it is good to be in the Grom Club and I'm happy to be a part of it
But yeah, guys, we should talk about this a little bit. You know, there, there's people out there who can't afford a Grom. You know, I mean, uh, we we say, oh, it's only four thousand dollars. Well, you know what? Uh, you can, you know, you can get a used one for like twenty-five, twenty-six, or whatever, for a, a good one like this one. You know what I'm saying? One that's a solid bike. But the thing is, a, a lot of people can't afford to spend that kind of money. So I mean, instead of putting these people down and being mean to them you know I mean at least they're trying to be part of a group you know what I'm saying and honestly those bikes are not really that bad I mean you put a little bit of money like a little bit of money into it as you could afford to do it okay don't just say well with all the money they put in it they could have bought a ground well that's not the point the point is they wanted to get out and ride and have fun you know when they were able you know they want they didn't have the money to buy it at the time so they wanted to be able to get something so they could ride right away, you know? I mean, we've all been there, I would think. I mean, I, okay, well, maybe not. There's a lot of rich YouTubers out there who kind of somehow were born into money or whatever, you know? I mean, not all of us are that way. I know I wasn't. So I pretty much had to earn every penny I made. You know, I didn't have nobody buying me fancy cars or sponsors or anything you know I, I I've never I don't have anybody sponsoring me everything I buy is on my own so you gotta remember guys not everybody you know gets all the benefits you know it seems like the people who already have money get all the benefits the sponsorships you know everything like that and it, in a way it doesn't make sense to me because they're the ones who are buying their products anyways so, I mean, wouldn't you want to give it to somebody who doesn't have the money and could actually, you know, use it and appreciate it instead of feeling obligated that, you know, they feeling obligated that they should get it for free, you know? But, ah, uh, whatever. I mean, hey, I, I'm glad for the channels that we have, you know? I mean, I, I love Grommy Bear. I, Photo Grammar, love his show. I love his bike he just got done building. Uh, if you haven't seen him, check it out. Uh, Grammy Bear's got those new flat board, or I don't know what they are, like freaking skateboard, whatever, but it's electric. In his recent videos, those are kick ass. I would, I would love to try one of those out. Uh, and uh, I would like to get a, something like a Cena too, but uh, I fall in the category of not being rich, so I'll probably have to buy a knockoff Cena. <laughs> So, but I mean, you know, you do what you got to do to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look, Turtle. Hey, Turtle. Ah, uh, maybe I should go save him before some jackass runs him over. People are idiots that way, you know. They see a turtle or whatever and they decide, hey, I'm going to run it over. And that's yeah, just wrong. We'll save the turtle. Hey, buddy, don't be sunning out there. You're going to get your butt run over. If I was closer to home, my sister would take them. <laughs> my sister just told me yesterday she wanted another turtle. But, uh, I don't know. Oh, say, oh he wet himself. What the hell, turtle? You that scared? I ain't gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna put you in the bushes so you don't get run over. I wish I knew if there was a pond somewhere I could put you instead. Here, sun yourself over there, turtle. Stay there. Or go back to your pond, but wait till nighttime so no car runs you over. All right. Did my good deed for the day, I guess. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of them lately. I guess before I was born, my parents used to have a pet skunk. And, I, you know, they had it descended and all that stuff. And, man, I think that would be so cool to have a pet skunk. I would love to have a pet skunk. <laughs> Scare the heck out of people. <laughs> oh, boy. I got the feeling we might be running into a couple turtles on this road. Because I know it's like uh, some spots around here are marshy, whatever. So. And on a hot day like today, you know, all these turtles are going to want to be out in the hot sun. I always forget, I, I think they're warm-blooded, cold-blooded, I think they're cold-blooded or something like that. I think that's what it's called when you when they need the sun to heat them up. I don't know. Put in the comments below and let me know. <laughs> oh, well.
I used to work at a pet shop and stuff, but I don't remember that kind of stuff. I had a lot of pets uh, when I worked at the pet shop. I used to have sugar gliders. Uh, I had some big old iguanas. They were like, Jesus, probably about four or five feet long. And I ended up giving those back to the pet shop because they were just too messy. Too, and I didn't have the time to take care of them because I worked two jobs. So... Oh man, this Grom is fun. But I mean, uh, like I was saying before guys, I mean, if you guys don't have the money to buy a Grom, buy a Vader or a Raz Rascal or whatever they're called. Uh, they got the mini Ducatis, you know, uh, off-brand ones too. And you know, you could build it up like I did with my, uh, with my Vader, you know, my Vader turned out really sweet I would say my Vader is just as dependable as this bike is now now that I got it all tuned and everything successfully uh, but I, I gotta I gotta admit the the Grom is a more refined bike it is uh, it it's like driving a Cadillac compared to like uh, I don't want to say no cheap car because <laughs> Honestly, the, the Vader, now that I did all the work to it, is a big difference. But when it was stock, it, it was a little, you could tell it was a little cheap, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the rear swing arm always came loose because uh, there was a lot of slop in the adjusters, stuff like that. But if you change it over to a Grom swing arm, you get rid of that problem. Uh, I honestly think the frame on the Vader is also off a little bit because uh, like this bike right here I can let go of the handlebars and it'll track super nice and straight where the Vader it will go straight but you gotta like lean a little bit and keep it going you know what I'm saying you can tell that when they built this bike they built it on a jig you know the frame it was built on a jig that kept it straight and welded it good and everything else where the Chinese one just kind of feels like maybe they slopped it together and called it a day you know what I'm saying uh, and uh, I see that a lot you know the Ice Bear Mad Dog I got they make trikes too and uh, the guy on the forum uh, the, I think it's Chuckus Life or something like that the forum I belong to because it's Chinese so instead of a, instead of being a ruckus they call it a Chuckus because it's uh, Chinese but uh, anyways this guy on the forum bought a trike and the trike he's got or you know when he got it the rear swing arm was kind of cocked to one side so the the bike was basically ba made from the factory to pretty much go in circles you know <laughs> so so somebody screwed up on the welding process you know and they just didn't care and they sent it out the door i mean it, you would think that would be an obvious thing you know but uh yeah see some people just don't wave they're like oh he's on a harley Go on a Harley. I ain't gonna wave. Uh, whatever. I don't care. I had a Harley. You know what? No big deal. No big deal. Harleys are nice bikes. Don't get me wrong. But I would. I think they're just a little overrated. You know, they're, you're dealing with technology from probably over 50, 60 years ago, and they haven't really made any outstanding upgrades. I think they're running, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're running fuel injection now, whatever. But uh, whatever, let's get off that subject. Let's get back to the that trike. Well, anyways, this guy bought that trike, and he couldn't even ride it because the axle was so crooked. And, and you know, he had to fix it himself. Now, if you're a bike manufacturer and you sell somebody a bike where they got to tear it apart and fix it themselves for a major, I would say that's like a major problem. You know, they should pay for it or give them a new bike. You know, take the one he's got and just give him a new one or even let him. In that, for instance, they shouldn't even let him keep that bike. I mean, come on. The, they, those guys are the ones who screwed up and made that big of a mistake. They should have gave him another one, 
And if they didn't want to pay for shipping it for it to come back, they should just let them keep it. But yeah, if I was that guy who bought that trike, I would have been really pissed and probably would have actually hired lawyers. Because if you buy a bike right for the factory and you can't ride it, that's a problem. But yeah, you know, like I was saying, yeah, you should, you know, people who want to get into Grom Gang and they can't afford it and all that, they they should go ahead and buy. Uh, you know what? I really didn't want to go this way. Oh uh, shoot! I need to turn around. I I did not want to go this way. I don't want to jump on the highway to get to where I want to go. So we'll just turn around and go back the way I was planning on going. Kind of got my directions messed up a little bit talking too much but yeah I mean go ahead and buy one but <clears throat> hopefully you have a dealer local to you where you could buy you know your Chinese bike or whatever so that way if you have a problem you can like take it right there and have them look at it whatever but uh, here's the thing when you do buy one of those bikes you have to know what you're doing to fix it I mean you got to know how to adjust a carburetor you at least got to know how to do that you got to know how to change jets you know in the carburetor because when you get them they run too lean and if the bikes go a lot more slower I I rich in mine up and my bike actually you know my my Vader when I got it with the 125 was only able to do like maybe 48 when I first got it well after I changed the jets to a little bit bigger jets I think I I can't remember what I put in I think it was like a 125 jet or something like that main jet whatever and and then I was able to get it up to uh, 58 I believe it was which is pretty comparable to the Grom you know I think this Grom right here I got it up to 60 so far and that that's about all it has right now but I mean it still might be breaking in I don't know but it's got like I said a thousand oh, 1080 on the dot right now so it should be pretty close to being broken if it's not all right this is the way I wanted to go here we go. So one thing I like about living in Wisconsin, you got all these nice back route roads. You know, I, I'm thinking I should probably change the tires on this bike too because it has the stock V rubbers and everybody complains about them. I hear some people say they're just fine. I believe Dodge Rider said they're just fine. Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm not a tire expert, expert and I'm also not a, I don't drive Rossi style. You know, I'm not like leaning knee and stuff like that. But I mean, I think before I attempted to do something like that, I probably would change the tires just because I don't want to risk dropping this bike. And, uh, you know, that actually, I keep forgetting to look it up, but I, I, I wonder what the purpose of bar end weights are, is for. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to look it up. I, I'm sure there's a reason for bar end weights, but I have no idea why. Somebody knows before, you know, before I look it up, you can put that down in the comments too. But anyways, guys, I'm going to call this uh, a video for right now. And I'll start making part two once I get by the lake. So I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, take care and peace out. Oh my God, guys, look at this car I just found on the side of the road. <laughs> it's an old Pontiac, 69 Pontiac, $6,000 this guy wants for it. 20, only 24,000 miles. Look at this, man. It's like mint. It, it's a nice looking car, though. I gotta say, I, I like it. it. It needs a lot of body work, though. I mean, you look at it, it's gonna need, you know, at least the fender's cut out, fixed up right there, you know. I mean, you probably better off. I mean, you probably want, well, you're probably not better off buying new fenders because the aftermarket's fit like shit. But, you know, you get somebody cut that out, repair it. Uh, not too bad down here. I mean, it's covered by a chrome strip, so kind of hard to see. I'm sure it's going to need new rockers. Uh, 
quarters, not too bad. It's probably gonna, you know, probably be probably be better off putting a new quarter on. This one might be this side might be fixable on the quarter. Look at this carpet, guys. You could tell a car from the 60s and 70s from this kind of carpet. You know, tack of the tack of the killer carpeting. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally 70s. Oh my god. Uh, it's actually a really nice car. I mean, this thing could be some of these really cool looking hot rod. Uh, this side probably looks like it's going to need at least a lower quarter. You know, cut it like about here and section it in. I mean, if the bottom there is okay, you could keep that, but uh, you could section it in, put it in. Uh, the door on this side looks decent. Maybe a little bit of repairs on that door. Not bad. Same with the bottom fender on here. Uh, it says 350, but you know what that 350 emblem on there looks like it was taken off of another car, but I could be wrong. It looks like it was taken off like actually a Chevy truck or something. <laughs> but let me see, does this thing got bench? Oh, hell yeah, it's got bench seat. Nice. <laughs> you know, I, if I actually bought a car like this, I would actually leave the bench seat in. I kind of liked bench seats. I remember being a kid growing up and having that. Buckets are overrated. At least you could fit three friends up in the front, you know, or you got your kid. You can have your kids sitting in the middle with you. Let them enjoy the car, too, you know. $6,000 might be a good deal, actually, for somebody, you know? I mean, it's not that bad of a car. It, it needs a little bit. It needs work, for sure, but it's not as bad as I thought it was when I first pulled over. Needs a windshield. Probably going to need inner, inner uh, fender wells, too, probably. I don't know what the floorboards look like. I'm not going to get down there and look at it, because I'm not buying it, but it's a pretty cool-looking car. called a custom s huh kind of almost like a gto but with a metal front end instead of a plastic bumper kind of cool all right guys i'll be back